Hello folks, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I hope everyone is doing great out there. I hope you're all still spinning music and discovering new sounds and um, having a great time through music. <laughs> all right. I was pretty reluctant to do this video at first because the artist I'm going to talk about is not exactly a very popular artist on the VC, but this morning we lost a legend today. Uh, as I'm sitting here, it's August 8th, and this morning Olivia Newton-John passed away at the age of 73. Uh, she uh, was suffering from uh, spine, spinal cancer, uh, which she was diagnosed with a few years, a couple of years back or so, and um, has been getting treatment for it and trying to stay stable with it. And it, she finally lost her courageous battle to spine cancer as she passed away this morning. And I've always been a huge fan of hers uh, since I was seven years old. Uh, like a lot of little boys growing up in the 70s, uh, we went to go see the movie Grease, saw this beautiful actress playing Sandy, and instantly got a crush. And that was the story with me too, just like everybody else, like every other kid in the 70s. Oh boy, I should say in the 70s. We all had a big crush on Olivia Newton-John, and um, as the years went on, I stayed with her music. I mean, through the rest of the 70s, all the 80s and 90s, early 2000s, I kept listening to Olivia Newton-John because I honestly love her voice. She is one of my favorite singers because she's just got that pure, beautiful voice that just sounds amazing. Um, a woman can't sing anything wrong. <laughs> as far as her singing voice. Even songs that are terrible, she'll make them sound great because of that great voice. Um, so I'm gonna share some Olivia vinyl with you. Uh, not every record of hers I have, just the special ones to me. I don't own Grease on vinyl, so don't worry, you're not gonna see that album. <laughs> I never owned it before, so. Anyway, um, I've been lucky enough to see Olivia Newton-John live many times. About 10 times, I think, I've seen her live. Uh, in the early 2000s, I joined an Olivia Newton-John fan club. I've never talked about this in a video. Uh, there was a Olivia Newton-John uh, fan club around my neck of the woods, Northern California, and I realized I lived somewhat close to some of the fans. A lot of them lived in the Sacramento area, which is about an hour's drive from here. And we would all meet up. I mean, we stayed in contact with each other through the internet but we would stay in contact we would all meet up with each other at olivia newton john concerts and there were plenty to go to in this area she came to lake tahoe area a lot i think i saw her live there about at least four to five times uh, back then it was a caesar's tahoe and she would play the big auditorium there and every time i went there i seen i would sit in the front row almost dead center and she would come out and walk in front of the stage and sing. And I swear to God, she was just inches away from me. I could just reach out and touch her. And the woman is absolutely gorgeous. When, you, when you're that close to her, my God, she was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful woman. And with the most pure voice I've ever heard. Um, I realize it's not studio trickery that makes her sound so good. She really can sing that good. And when you see her live and you're that close to her, you realize this is the genuine talent. She really has that golden voice, that beautiful golden voice she has. It's real. <laughs> it's not studio trickery. It's real. She was a, a magnificent talent. And like I said, one of my favorite singers of all time. Um, I have great memories of seeing her live. Uh, when she came to Reno, Nevada, which is not that far from here, couple hours drive, almost three hours drive. I uh, saw one of her shows at the Reno Hilton and playing the big auditorium there. Again, sitting pretty close to the front row, uh, she surprised all the fans as she did this really long medley of all her 80s hits. And one big medley, and, and it surprised all of us because we didn't think, these are 80 songs she hadn't sung in, in quite a few years. So I loved it so much. She was there for a two-night stand. I only had a ticket for one night. 
the following morning I bought a ticket <laughs> to see her again same place and just paid for another night in my hotel room and spent the whole weekend with Olivia and all the Olivia Newton John fans that was that was a great that was a great memory uh, that was great times I mean meeting all her fans I mean a lot of them would flew in from the East Coast and Middle America just to see her in Reno and Lake Tahoe so I got to meet a lot of fans from uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, Texas. I got, I got to meet a lot of her fans from different places at those shows. Um, like I said, I must have seen her live about almost 10 times between 2002 and 2005 or 6. And, um, ah, God, I love seeing her live. All right, I'm going to show you some of my vinyl I have from her. Like I said, not every record. Um, this is the... 40th anniversary pressing of physical there we go this came out actually a few months ago so i got this a few months ago there's what the whole cover looks like and there's the gatefold this is the 40th anniversary pressing of it it's remastered and it's on uh, colored vinyl as you can see there really beautiful record Sounds really good too. Um, I have to admit, <laughs> the, the songs I like the least from Olivia are her biggest hits, which is Physical and You're the One I Want, do what she did with uh, Travolta in the movie Grease. I'm not a, the biggest fan of those two songs, and those are her biggest hits. But all the other songs I absolutely love. Um, and it came with this really huge poster of her. Um, yeah, this was a gorgeous woman, you guys. <laughs> She was just a beautiful lady. Beautiful person, too. Wonderful person with a lovely heart. It's a loving heart. Oh, my God. That's what I loved about her most. She always seemed so genuine when she sang, when she smiled, and she said hello to everybody. There was, she just had this genuine good spirit about her that, I, that was just, I found infectious. Uh, really loved. I wish I had met her. I never met her. I met her backup singers, members of her band, never got to meet her, but I've seen her live so many times, I feel like I did meet her. <laughs> this is the, auto, the audiophile pressing of the same album. The only reason I'm showing that is, um, as you can see there, the only reason I'm showing this is because I always meant to do the listener's test, you know, the remastered audio versus this great audio file pressing I have, I think from 82, and it has the same gatefold as the last one. Um, and um, here's the insert. I things are just falling all over the place. Here's the insert for it right here. Very nice. Now, like I said, uh, this was my copy of Physical for a long time, and I loved this copy. I thought it sounded great. And now I get the remastered one, with, which just came out a couple months ago. And now I'm thinking, I, I wish I had done the uh, listener's test to see which one sounds better, or they just sound exactly the same. God knows if I'll even know. God knows if I can even tell the difference. To tell you the truth, but. I always meant to do that, and uh, maybe tonight I'll do it, because I do plan on putting some Olivia tonight and watching some Olivia videos that I have in my collection. I got quite a collection of her, not just records and CDs, but uh, live videos too. Um, I was into her, needless to say, <laughs> and this record, um, don't you hate it when records come out real easy? And they're like a serious bitch to get back into the jacket. Good Christ. <laughs> anyway. So those are my uh, copies of Physical. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the song, I do love the album. Um, now here's Xanadu. I actually need a better copy. This actually is a better copy. The first copy I had of Xanadu was so partied out. <laughs> Uh, this one's actually a little bit better, though I, it only cost me a couple bucks to get it. I just wanted a nicer copy of this album. The movie 
itself is not very good. <laughs> in fact, it, I remember when it came out in the box office, it pretty much tanked. But the music on here, a lot better than the movie. And ELO has some songs on here as well. Um, so, really cool album. I uh, can't say I'm a big fan. So here's the Levy Newton John side, and this is the ELO side. <laughs> and then of course they do ELO and Levy Newton John together do the song Xanadu, the title track. They do those that song together. So anyway, um, yeah, the movie not so great. The music a lot better than the movie. <laughs> and ELO fans usually hate this album. They say it's like the worst the band ever put out, but I actually liked what they did on this album, so... Oh well. <laughs> different strokes for different folks, what can I say? But, yeah, I mean, it's a fun movie to watch if you don't take it too seriously, if you just want to have a good time and, you know, and not, not be so critical. <laughs> but, yeah, not the greatest of movies, but a, a really cool soundtrack, though. This was her Greatest Hits, Volume 2. I remember when this came out and going to Tower Records, they had a huge uh, cardboard, life-size display, cardboard cutout of this of this uh, cover, which looks like that. Real huge, and with all, all her albums on it, this, of course, the Greatest Hits album and all her albums from the past were on this big display in the Tower Records. I thought, wow, that's cool. <laughs> this is when Tower Records really would go all out and do big displays. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't like, this is the Tower Records I had here in Stockton. It wasn't like the Hollywood one where they would decorate the front of the store with all the artwork. All the artwork was inside the store. And this is just a regular MCA label. Nothing exciting there. Um, I'm a big fan of her 80s hits. <laughs> and that's, this album pretty much has all the ones you'd want to hear. Heart Attack, Magic, Hopelessly Devoted, which I do love that song. Uh, Make a Move On Me, great song. This is actually on the physical album. A Little More Love, probably my favorite song of hers, where she shows those vocal abilities. Tied Up, Suddenly, Xanadu. I mean, there's some great 80s and late 70s songs on here. Cool collection if you're just looking for the hits. If you're just looking for the hits, it's a cool one to have. And what is up with these old records? I just don't want to go in. There we go. I guess I'm getting better at it. <laughs> but very cool Greatest Hits album. I guess the volume two, the first volume was for 70s one, all the 70s hits. I don't have that one. This I really love. This is the um, MoFi pressing of Totally Hot. It has Deeper Than a Night, A Little More Love. Oh my god. Uh, Boats Against the Current is a really good song. She does a cover of Give Me Some Loving, which actually was really good. Oh. Uh, yeah. Really good album. Really good album. This came out after her being in Greece. Um, I had like a regular used pressing of it. This MoFi pressing sounds so much better. A lot of a lot of depth in the bass. Uh, the highs are a lot more clearer and cleaner. And you can hear her voice a lot more cleaner too. <laughs> That's always important. Love the MoFi pressings of albums and uh, I'm so glad I just got one of them from her. So, really good album this one. Um, God, I can't wait to spin this. I'm spinning all these records tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I miss her already. I miss her already, even though I've seen her live so many times and got all the vinyl records I could ever want from her that, that I was curious about. It would be nice to see her live one more time. I didn't know, I can't remember where I was to see her live for the final time. Um, I really don't remember, but I do remember my favorite shows of seeing her, and a lot of those songs were on this album that I like to hear live, so, so glad I got this. 
This is one you don't see very often. This is called The Rumor. Um, came out in, I think, 89 or 91. I am, now I don't really remember. Title track, The Rumor, was the big single off of this, which was co-written by Elton John. This is a fun album, too. Uh, this just has the MCA label on it, so nothing special there to show as far as a label. But some good songs on this one. Um, this was not this album wasn't as big seller as her albums in the past, but she still sounded great on here. Uh, I think I like about half the songs on here. The other half, uh, I, I find a little forgetful. But half this half the songs on this record I think are really good. So definitely spend that one tonight. And the twelve inch thing, I have a few of her twelve inch singles, but this one's my favorite. It's for the song Twist of Fate. The second movie she did with uh, Travolta, terrible movie. I saw it on HBO, did not like it at all. <laughs> uh, I'm not really a big fan of her movies. Even though she's made a lot of them, I'm not fans of really any of them. Um, Grease I liked as a kid, but I can't watch it as an adult. <laughs> I just can't. But the music from those movies I thought were really good. So this on this side we have the mix of the song Twist of Fate. And on the B-side, we have a mix of the song Living in Desperate Times. And um, these were great songs. They're good 80s songs. If you're a teenager, I was in my early teens when this first came out. Eh, MCA. I was in my teens when these first came out, and they were, they were fun songs. Uh, I remember I liked the video to Twist of Fate. Living in Desperate Times had a video as well. I wasn't really the biggest fan of that video. But I did like the song, and her voice always sounds great on these songs. All right, that's going to do it. I didn't want to show, like, a ton of Olivia vinyl, just the ones that I go to the most. Uh, like I said earlier, I miss her already. Uh, when I, I was working when I heard the news that she had passed away. Um, I'm a driver by trade, so I was in between driving people around. So I had, like, 30 minutes to kick back under a shady tree and look at my phone and that's when I saw that she had passed away. Uh, I actually saw the official statement from her husband and then saw that it was being reported ABC News, CBS News and every other entertainment media channel there is. <laughs> that's when it hit me hard like wow. I mean it didn't come as a surprise I knew she had spine cancer uh, but still to actually see her name and when she was born, when she passed away, rest in peace under it. It, it hit me kind of hard. It, it hit, it was like a gut punch. And though I wasn't a sobbing mess, I did cry a few tears for Olivia. Uh, Cause she did mean a lot to me. Her music, her music and her image meant a lot to me. And I will definitely miss her a lot, a lot. Um, I, I feel lucky to have seen her live as many times as I did and have all the great memories of her music and seen her live as I do have. I'm very fortunate. All right, that's going to do it. Rest in peace, Olivia Newton-John. Gone but never forgotten. See ya.